I am starting out with four chicken thighs. You can use chicken breast if you would like. Typically, we do use chicken breast, but I didn't have any. I had these thighs and that's what we're gonna use. You just use what you got. You can even use rotisserie chicken if you wanted to. You would just season it. But again, I'm using chicken thighs and I'm cutting these into chunks. Then we are going to add some no salt Tony Satchery's Cajun seasoning, and you can be really generous with that. And then we are going to add some seasoned salt. And I know you're wondering, how much did you add? I will put the ingredients in the description for you. Then just coat these really well, wash those hands, and then we are going to add a little more Cajun seasoning because I felt like it needed it. We'll need a very, very large skillet. We are going to add a half a stick of butter to this. Turn that stove top eye or that burner onto low to medium heat. Then add your chicken to the pan. I like to put a lid on mine because I feel like it cooks the chicken more thoroughly. And this locks in the moisture and makes your chicken more tender. I do have a steam hole on my lid. If you don't have a steam hole where it releases the steam, you can always just leave a little opening with that lid around the edge. It's just kind of move it around and flip it over. You want to make sure it's brown on both sides. You're going to cook this chicken for a total of 20 minutes. Now, while we've got that going, we're gonna go over to the other countertop and we are gonna cut up our vegetables. First, we're going to slice one green bell pepper, one whole red bell pepper, and again, just slice it. Then I've got a whole eight ounce container of white mushrooms that I'm going to slice. And by the way, I washed all these vegetables and you need to do that. Some people put salt in the water, some people put baking soda, some people put vinegar in the water. But I personally like to put just a little baking soda in the water. It's supposed to pull the pesticides off. I don't know that it does that, but it just makes me feel better. Now back over to the stove top. We're gonna check on that chicken. It's looking good. And while that chicken is cooking, we're not finished with our vegetables just yet. We are going to cut up a half of a yellow onion. We are just going to slice this. And I multitask in the kitchen, y'all. I don't know about you, but I do. My husband, he doesn't like to do that, but I do. So back over to the stove top. I don't wanna make you dizzy, but we're gonna check on this chicken. It's looking good, so we are going to take it out of our large skillet or a large pan. And by the way, if you don't have a very large skillet, you can always use a pot. You can use a six quart pot. Let's just set that chicken aside and we are going to add our vegetables to this skillet. And you do wanna cut your stovetop eye down to simmer or your burner, whichever you prefer to call it. Once you've got all your vegetables in the skillet, and just give it a really nice stir, and then we're gonna put the lid back on this and let this simmer. And you do wanna keep an eye on this, stirring occasionally. Let this simmer for about five minutes or so. I actually let mine simmer a little bit too long, but then over back over to this countertop, you will need one package of smoked sausage or you know, kielbasa, and I'm using turkey kielbasa, and you're gonna quarter that. And then we're gonna put that in a different skillet. Now you could have done this in the other skillet as well with after you took the chicken out. I just don't like to do that. Um, I like to really brown the kielbasa before I put it into this recipe. Also, I've got my water boiling on the back burner for my pasta as well. And then we are going to add our ingredients to the vegetables. Add one and a half cup of half and half. 
One fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. One fourth teaspoon of lemon pepper. Yes, lemon pepper. This ingredient makes a difference. I mean, we've actually made it without it. It makes a difference. It just adds something special to this dish. And then you're going to add a fourth a teaspoon of basil. And I've got basil leaves that I dried out, so I'm just guessing at this. Let's give this a stir and mix all those flavors together. My husband and I make this dish a lot. And every time we make it, it seems like we do something a little bit different to it. Do any of you do that? I mean, it's when you don't have an, you know, an actual recipe to go off of, you just guess at this stuff. Now let's add our chicken back to the pan, to the skillet. And now we can add that smoked sausage that we browned. Let's blend all of this together. And guys, don't let this recipe intimidate you. Once you make it, you'll find out. It does have a lot of ingredients, but it is so easy to make. And after you make it a few times, you'll just be throwing it together. You want to make sure your stovetop by or your burner is on simmer. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes. And while that's simmering, go ahead and take care of your pasta. And you can always pre-cook that pasta. You can always pre-cook your chicken for this recipe. I find that makes it a lot easier. You will need an entire box of fettuccine, and this is a 16 ounce box. We use the entire box for this recipe, and that's a lot of pasta. You don't have to, you can cut that in half if you want to and you would have more of the meat and vegetables than you would the pasta. I personally prefer it that way, but my husband likes pasta. And by the way, just follow the instructions on the box to make that fettuccine and make sure you rinse it really well. And then after your 10 minutes of simmering this and letting all those flavors blend together, we're just gonna add that pasta. You'll slowly add it and work it into the vegetables and the meat. Once you've added all your pasta, this is ready to serve. And we like to top it with a little Parmesan cheese and a little garlic toast on the side. And voila! dinner is served. And by the way, depending on your serving amount, this will feed about six people, four to six people. It's a lot. It will freeze. We do freeze part of this. It's great, if not even better, the next day. 